Monday of this week, uh, Congressman Calvert was in Marietta. Uh, Supervisor Stone was in Marietta. Mr. Lane, Mayor Long, and I, uh, we were all at the Border Patrol Station. We spoke with the senior leadership of the Border Patrol in this region. A lot of the questions that you have, they answered for us, so I'm not going to cover that right now as I did last night. We'll let them speak for themselves. But at the end of the meeting, when it was kind of time to sum up, what I said to them was, okay, what I'm hearing is that there is a ad hoc policy in place which says that people coming across the border who are not being literally arrested, they are walking across the border and say, I give up, and because of U.S. law, they are entitled to a hearing now, and instead of processing them in Texas, in the Rio Grande Valley, we're transporting them across the length and breadth of the United States to Southern California, across the Southwest, and when they're done processing, if they have a relative somewhere in the United States, don't ask me how that's verified, somewhere in the United States, then they will be dropped off at a bus station and they will be expected to travel to their relative's house. And I said my conclusion is that we will have some number of tens of thousands of people who then end up adding to the already illegal population in the United States of America. <laughs> Let me, let me close with the humanitarian aspect. Uh, I appeared on several interview shows today, and what the press was trying to get me to say is that we're all a bunch of racists in Southwest for the South. Yeah. And I reminded them that we are a melting pot just like all of California. Yeah. Almost 27% of our population in Murrieta is Hispanic, and we have a Hispanic population. Yeah. The original reason to not have these folks come to Murrieta for processing was because of a lack of facilities. That reason has not changed. When we toured the facilities on Monday, what we saw was a jail. If you are concerned about being a humanitarian, you don't take mothers and children and put them in the <laughs> The facility that we have here in Murrieta has rooms that will accommodate 30 to 40 people each. That facility is Spartan. There are steel benches, there are blankets in a corner, and there is a concrete floor. There is one potty in each one of these facilities. It is against the wall. There is a wall uh, on two sides, about three feet high. So there is absolutely no privacy, no washroom facilities, no shower facilities, and the food that is provided would be the Border Patrol equivalent of a meal, meals ready to eat, or anything that maybe faith-based groups would provide. That is not humanitarian. That is not what Southwest Riverside County is about. <laughs> so <clears throat> we are doing two things. We are standing up for the United States Constitution, and we are... And we are also standing up for treating people in a dignified, humane way and putting Thank you, Council Member Gibbs, for bringing this up to date to where we're at today. One more thing I have to address that occurred in the past that is extremely important. You, you heard about immigrants. I heard several questions. Well, you're against the immigrants. You don't want immigrants here. It's further from the truth. We have a border patrol office in our city, 
and they go, they process every day, and there's no protesters out there. That's not the issue. It's this federal issue that we are trying to fix. In fact, to some of you, and I've never felt I had to tell anyone this. Uh, in fact, I don't even know if Councilmember Gibbs knows this because he mentioned we had one Hispanic on the council. Well, Councilmember Gibbs, you actually have one and a half because my mother is Hispanic. <laughs> Hispanic. In fact, her grandparents, Danny Contreras, will you please stand up? Well, his parents came to the United States from Mexico during the Civil War, and they came here through a process that was legal and checked and out. Danny Contreras, who is the hardest working man that I've ever been around, he started in strawberry fields, then he became a truck driver, then he owned his own business, which was a market, and today he sold that business some time ago, started investing in property, and is a contributing taxpayer of the United States of America, owns about 10 houses here locally now, and he's done very well for himself, he's 86 years old, still builds his own patio covers. <laughs> immigrants coming here in the rightful way. Yeah. This to my point. I was asked several times, are you embarrassed or are you proud of what happened at the Border Patrol? Well, I'm proud of our police chief and the department, the way they handle it. Yeah. that there was a peaceful protest and there was both sides represented and the police maintained the safety of everyone including people passing through. What I found out later on, and that, they did a great job, what I found out later on amongst that pile of people there were two opposing sides and it was getting pretty heated and people were obviously very passionate about their stance. One member took it upon themselves to spit on the other member. And I'm telling you that is not acceptable behavior. That is absurd. It will not be tolerated, and it is embarrassing, and is not a true reflection of the compassionate, passionate community we are. No matter what side of this you are on, when you're out there, exercising your constitutional rights, please do it in a civil way. It will, it will benefit what you're trying to accomplish much, much more than it will when you spit on someone, and I think that is very counterproductive of what you're trying to accomplish. So please do it. I know most of you feel that way, but I had to say it for the, the, the few that were filmed and, and went across the nation.